the worst year for a lot of us for our mental as well as physical health. So joining us this morning is best-selling author, coach, and fitness expert, Lisa Goldenthal. Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa G, your host. You're at the top of your game, yet the game is changing faster than ever. Strategies that got you here aren't the ones that'll keep you here. The pressure is relentless and the fear of obsolescence looms large. That's why I'm here. Welcome to the new podcast series, Disrupted. How to be gritty and unlock performance. This is your chance where I sit down with today's top or experts in business, mindset, wellness, and success to help you master disruption and thrive. Thanks for coming and I'll see you soon. He's a tech SaaS sales enablement strategist and consultant with a background in Silicon Valley startups like LinkedIn, Google, Uber, Tesla, and more dedicated to helping business owners and employees become better individuals. Currently, he runs his own consultancy. He's a published author, expertise in personalized sales through LinkedIn Learning, one of my favorite venues with over 15K learners. Welcome to the podcast, Luis Baez. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you for being here. Before we start, I just want to thank our sponsors from Magic Mind for this little productivity in a shot without having to get all jittery from coffee. This helps keep me focused on all of the things I have to do as an entrepreneur. So if you want, take advantage. We're offering a special offer, magicmind.com. Help all of you stay focused, not get distracted, and it requires a lot of energy creating content. So this is what is working for me help keeps me amped out with out bouncing off the walls. So I found this little shot. If you're not always a hundred percent focused, get things done quickly. I found the solution. It's an extra 20% off, which means you can get up to 75% off. So hurry before it goes away. Magicmind.com backslash January whole CEO. And my code is CEO 20. So Thanks, Luis. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to connect with you and your audience. I am so thrilled to have you. Welcome, welcome. I want to talk about, jump right in. How can you leverage your own intellectual property as your next entrepreneurial asset? Oh, I love that question. Um, So I often think about music artists and recording artists. Um, You know, I'm still on that high of of the Renaissance ball with Beyonce 2023. It was epic. Um, And I watched the film of the actual, you know, production behind it. And she worked on the album and the concert. Everything was a four year endeavor. Right. And it is something that she created one time, this album that from there she then created and amassed these other experiences but it's this one thing that she created one time that lives on the shelf in perpetuity making money for her so that's the way that i think about you know what does it mean this day and age uh to thrive in this economy the way that it's shifting in the direction that we're moving in and how to lean into the things even the ones that we're scared of things like the ai movement and all that jazz right you do want to think about putting and, and bottling your secret sauce and putting it on the shelf for sale I am all about um, repurposing content and creating like, let's say a podcast like this yeah. and then trying to use it on all the things like YouTube and Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. Facebook, all of the things. Um, how can we do that? What is your um, expert suggestion on Gosh. taking this content and repurposing it? Yeah, I think that particularly around like podcasting, when I am a guest on shows, I often think about the conversation I'm having just continuing on beyond the actual day of recording. So the podcast will drop. From that one episode, I can clip five things that I've said and shared, whether it's a framework, a story, a quick you know nugget of wisdom, then that becomes video that lives in reels, goes on LinkedIn, 
um, from those uh, from those things, you can then transcribe them, turn them into posts, right? You can take that transcript, lean into your favorite AI chatbot, Bard, ChatGPT, whatever that might be, to help you slice and dice that content in just a few minutes. And then you just take that moment, you know, pen to paper. If you're, you know, analog like I am sometimes, um, or use a favorite scheduling tool, Hootsuite, later, whatever that might be. But start to then plug in that content across the calendar to make sure that it actually gets shared. And know that beyond the week of the release of a show that conversation and all of that content can be repurposed over and over because the thing is, especially online, people have amnesia, right? The, the, the way that news cycles work, everything goes so fast that people forget that something was mentioned last week. And so mentioning it again this week isn't a bad idea. That is such a brilliant tip because I know as an entrepreneur, you want to be always positioning yourself as an expert. So if somebody's mm -hmm. interviewing you, then you can repurpose different quotes from that podcast. I love that tip. Thank you so much for sharing that one. <laughs> and I want to talk to you about aligning automation, which we talked about a little bit with scheduling tools and chat GPT, things like that. How can we align automation and authenticity with our business strategy? Yeah, I think that it is so important to... You know, we often worry about the selling process or like the, the you know, trying to push the market, go, you know, go to market with the product, et cetera. Stop for a moment and think about the buyer experience, you know, and the way that buyers move and think now. They're far savvier than they used to be when they show up at your door. And so you have to honor where they are and you have to listen to what it is that they want. They want a self-guided buying experience except at very specific touch points where they do want a human interaction. They want to be able to browse. And once they find something that they like, they want to talk to someone and have a consult and make sure that whatever that is, is just the right fit and just the right size for them. And so as you're thinking about finding that balance of automation and authentically, you know, personalizing the experience, think about, yes, you can self-serve your content, your experience, the sort of educational component of buying, at some point you want to think about introducing yourself through personalized video, right? Step away from the automated chat bot, show some face. Once you have that person's contact information, thank them, you know, for embarking on that journey with you, offer to answer any questions they might have and invite them to a conversation with you to have a consult, you know, and to do the right sort of fitting for them. And so that's what people want, right? They want to only talk to people when they want to talk to people. And so you want to design a buying experience around that. Well, let's go with diving a little deeper into this topic, because I really think there's so much to unpack why don't you give a few examples of what that would look like? Is the video um, something that you can use for multiple people or is it an individual video? And what would be the self-service at the content? So let's give me an example of that. Yeah. So let's say you are a consultant, right? You are a practitioner. You're running your own business or you're running a firm. Um, you might post some content online, whether it's an article on LinkedIn, whether you're running ads, whether you're speaking on podcasts, you drive everyone, all roads go to a landing page for, let's say, uh, free template or checklist or guide that enhances that person's capacity to do something, learn something or decide something. And once you have that person's information, right, typically you'll fire off a series of automated emails, nurturing that lead. Thanks for joining. Here's some more content. Here's the case study. Here are resources available to you. By the way, here's some pricing options, et cetera, right? You start to pepper in and start to nurture that lead. Think about revisiting some of these uh, sequences that you might have and peppering them with personalized videos. And they can be stock video, right? You don't need to say the person's name, but you can say, hello, my friend, I appreciate you. I appreciate your interest. Typically, when I connect with customers that are at this point in the journey, they're either facing this problem or that one. If you identify with either of these paths, let me explain to you where I can help you and guide you next, right? Then as they engage with you, if they respond to you, that's when you can hit them with a more personalized video. 
Hey, Lisa, I appreciate you getting back to me. I, you know, from what I've learned about you, it seems like you and I are aligned on X, Y, and Z. Why don't we jump on a call? Let's have a conversation. Let's try this on for size and see where we go from here. Right. And so you want to balance, you know, peppering the automation with some humanization. And the minute a lead engages with you, start personalizing their experience right there and then. And is that typically done through email marketing or direct message campaigns or both? Yeah, you can do it through your email service. Like if you're, you know, engaging with uh, an email provider that's firing off automated emails. Yeah, you engage with people directly there. Certainly through LinkedIn, you can also share content. I use a tool like Video Ask. I personalize these videos, drop those links right into those in messages in the in the inbox, right? Um, but the the idea is that however you're engaging with the person, at some point, you want to assure them that they're not having a canned experience by you know, showing up and, and humanizing it, whether it's a video or even an audio message. I love that you're such a sales ninja because you have <laughs> such a friendly way of approaching this. And I want to talk a little bit about showing up as yourself the way you do so beautifully with your whole self and making a lasting impact since you're a oh. ninja sales expert. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, uh, you know, Lisa, I am someone that grew up in New York City. Um, I am Puerto Rican. I'm an out gay man. You know, I'm never someone that looks like anyone in the room or has had quite the same lived experience. And so what I have learned is that as I move through things, not everyone is going to pick up what I put down. And I've gone through a lot of experiences in my career where I try to adopt and, you know, sort of mold myself into a certain image or a certain personality. Um, and I try to show up a certain way. Um, you know, I worked in advertising sales in New York City, very sharky environment, you know, very aggressive, extroverted sort of way of approaching sales, not my style at all. Um, and I just leaned into who I am and how I do things and the right people gravitated towards me. And all those folks that otherwise would resist a conversation with a salesperson because they're used to that sort of sharky pressure, you know, cooker sort of experience. They're often just like they let their guard down when they they recognize that someone's just trying to have a conversation with them instead of just shoving features and 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 things down their throat. And so, um, I think that this day and age, people the cat is out the hat. People know that salespeople in the background have a whole host of tools and things in their arsenal, right? I think that especially now in the day and age of everything being automated, um, the more human and authentic you can be, the better aligned you are with the customer, and the sort of more empathy you demonstrate the more likely you are to see the results that everyone deserves. Wow. So I love the idea of looking at sales as service. Like if you have yes. service and you want to serve that person, they can get the results you know you can deliver. Yeah. What are some concrete other examples you can give us on how to be less salesy, less spammy, less pitch slappy, mm -hmm. and more authentically deliver the service that you know your clients need? Yeah, I think that you need to develop your ability for active listening, which means that you're doing a lot more questioning than you are talking. I find that people who are early in their sales career or earlier in their entrepreneurial pursuits are so worried. They're so anxious about hitting specific goals, proving to someone or themselves that it's possible that they can do it. And so they arrive at conversations with customers and they assume this position of being the expert and the know-it-all and having to show it off. And often in that moment, they're, you know, showcasing features and highlighting all the capabilities and they forget to check in with the customer. Right. Who are you? What do you need? What do you want? How do you want it? When do you need it? Right. And, and what else have you tried on for size? Who else are you engaging in this exploratory phase? What other products or services are you considering? What other firms are you talking to? Right. I cannot drive a successful sale or a successful experience for you if I don't know what's going on in your world, right? I might be the fifth person you're talking to. You might be sick of talking to people and I need to be a, a mindful of that and adjusting the way that I show up in the conversation. Or maybe you've gone through that show up and throw up product demo four times before jumping on a call with me. And I can be the one to interrupt your expectation of what's about to happen by showing up in a more authentic and engaging way.
right and so i think that's the 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 real importance there is like you you want to empathize with the customer by giving them voice right when they jump on a call with you recognize they didn't want to be on a call with anybody to begin with and they're already trying to figure out a problem and everyone's trying to squeeze something out of them you could be the hero by just letting them have a moment to let their hair down i love your focus on active listening and making <clears throat> sorry the customer feel heard so it's by asking a lot of questions you say and would you repeat then back what they said in active listening like so Luisa if I'm hearing you correctly talk to a bunch of people you're really not excited about being on this call right now um what what are you really interested in like what what is the goal here like yeah. can you be that authentic with people yeah. What is it that you need to see hear, or experience today to feel like this wasn't a waste of your time and pause and let the person answer that question? That is a great question. Yeah. We feel or experience today to make this a good time. Yeah. Worth your time. Worth your time. Oh, yeah. That is pure gold. I hope you guys are listening to this <laughs> you know, because you're so unassuming in your approach and that's what is needed in sales right now. I mean, everything yeah. is sales and marketing. And what other strategies do you have in business that you want to help us with flipping the script on how things are traditionally being done? Yeah, I think when I connect with folks, particularly in B2B sales, if I'm selling to someone who is a director or an executive within a company, they're trying to solve a problem. They're likely not the only person involved in making that decision or assessing whether I might be the fit for them, you know, and consulting their business. And beyond getting into KPIs and metrics and what are your goals? When do you want it? When are you launching? What is where? I just pause for a moment and I try to really just humanize. Like, yes, your title is VP of X, Y, or Z. But at the end of the day, you are a son, daughter, brother, sister, mother, father, whomever you might be. I need to just understand, like, what is it that's compelling you and motivating you to do this work? How long have you been at your job? Are you due for a promotion? What can I do to help you shine in this process? I'm sure you need to deliver the right result at the right cost to deliver the optimal sort of outcome for the business. So how do I help you be the hero in that boardroom? right? Leaning into that opportunity to show up for the person that way, they're more likely to pull you into the conversation, right? Even if ultimately, you know, you're out of budget or whatever that might be, having that trust and that clarity in the process for all parties makes it a smoother experience. I love how you focus on serving them in that way, like making them shine and look good, understanding yeah. that maybe even if right now they're not buying, they're going to remember you because you built the relationship and so many times when I get these DMs on LinkedIn all the time, I feel like people don't have patience to build relationships anymore. No, we have developed this microwave mentality. You know, you put the thing in the machine, hit the button, you a minute later you get results, right? And even uh, particularly in the business sector, consulting and coaching and practitioners uh, running ads, right? They're used to seeing the leads come in, the trickle and like having something to chew on immediately. Um, the thing is that, yeah, you're absolutely right. I might connect with someone who isn't ready to commit or make an investment today, but they will move on elsewhere. They'll remember that I was thoughtful enough to just sit down with them and have that sort of you know conversation. And they'll invite me to have a conversation again at someone else's table, right? And that's ultimately what I want is those referrals. And, and that, you know, that that's what helps to build a business, right? We can talk about running ads and publicity and all these things all day long, but the quickest way to land your next customer for the lowest cost is through a referral. Yeah. I just love how easy it is to talk to you and I can see how successful you are. Mm -hmm. I started this podcast because I was disrupted and everything yeah. was difficult in 2020. So I decided to help people become unstoppable this series is about grit and unlocking performance. So my last question for you is, do you have any advice for people out there where everything is being done differently now, where they can have the grit and performance levels to keep going? Gosh, 
I am going to share some, uh, one of my, you know, isms, mantras, sayings, you know, it's just something that I learned a long time ago. And I learned it from someone that was my arch nemesis in college. We didn't get along. Um, but they said something that stayed with me till this day. Excuses are the tools of idiots, right? I am way too smart to be using these tools, to be making excuses, right? And while I understand that things are moving very quickly and things are changing, I can't let the overwhelm be an excuse for not learning or asking questions and trying to go with the current and keep up with my industry. Um, and it's harsh. It's a very harsh saying. I'm going to recognize that it won't sit well with everyone, but it works for me because in those moments where I'm having these like ruminations, self, you know, doubt or negative self-talk or whatever, I remind myself of that. I've got the sticky note right here in the corner, excuses are the tools of idiots. And that just brings me right back. I'm, I'm making excuses. I've got to ask for help, delegate or jump in and just, just get at it. I love that because you get to choose, you know, yeah. it's excuses or results. Or yeah. do you choose guys? And Luis Baez, you are such a wealth of information on sales and new way of doing business. Where can people find more of you? Yeah, um, I hang out on LinkedIn and uh, I welcome you. If you anything that I said resonated with you, I lay out all the pages of my leadership and sales playbooks bear for anyone to to consume through my 14 day training uh, which is available on learnfromluis.com wonderful learnfromluis.com thanks for being a fabulous guest thank you lisa if you're like me as a content creator coach speaker or podcaster doing all the things this little shot of productivity is my secret it is magicmind.com we have a special discount for my listeners. If you're getting distracted, I hear a lot of you have focus problems like I do. You want to get all jittery from having too much coffee. You require the focus and the energy and the balance. So this is what I'm doing. Um, if you're not always focused and getting everything done, I'm going to recommend going to magicmind.com backslash whole CEO and you can get a extra 20% off for January. So before that goes away, www.magicmind.com backslash January, whole CEO and my code CEO20. Thanks for coming and I'll see you soon.